Social history, often called the new social history, is a field of history that looks at the lived experience of the past. In its golden age, it was a major growth field in the 1960s and 1970s among scholars, and still is well represented in history departments in Britain, Canada, France, Germany, and the United States. In the two decades from 1975 to 1995, the proportion of professors of history in American universities identifying with social history rose from 31% to 41%, while the proportion of political historians fell from 40% to 30%. In the history departments of British and Irish universities in 2014, of the 3,410 faculty members reporting, 878 26% identified themselves with social history while political history came next with 841 25%. <laughs> Old and new social history The older social history before 1960 included numerous topics that were not part of the mainstream historiography of political, military, diplomatic and constitutional history. It was a hodgepodge without a central theme, and it often included political movements, like populism, that were «social» in the sense of being outside the elite system. People's history was sometimes so Marxist that non-Marxists were alienated by it. Social history was contrasted with political history, intellectual history and the history of great men. English historian G. M. Trevelyan saw it as the bridging point between economic and political history, reflecting that, "...without social history, economic history is barren and political history unintelligible." While the field has often been viewed negatively as history with the politics left out, it has also been defended as, "...history with the people put back in." Topic. New social history movement The new social history exploded on the scene in the 1960s, quickly becoming one of the dominant styles of historiography in the US, Britain and Canada. The French version, promulgated by the Annales School, was very well organized and dominated French historiography, and influenced much of Europe and Latin America. Jürgen Kaka finds two meanings to social history. At the simplest level, it was the subdivision of historiography that focused on social structures and processes. In this regard it stood in contrast to political or economic history. The second meaning was broader, and the Germans called it Gesellschaftsgeschichte. It is the history of an entire society from a social historical viewpoint. In Germany the Gesellschaftsgeschichte movement introduced a vast range of topics, as Kaka, a leader of the Bielefeld School recalls, in the 1960s and 1970s, social history caught the imagination of a young generation of historians. It became a central concept, and a rallying point, of historiographic revisionism. It meant many things at the same time. It gave priority to the study of particular kinds of phenomena, such as classes and movements, urbanization and industrialization, family and education, work and leisure, mobility, inequality, conflicts and revolutions. It stressed structures and processes over actors and events. It emphasized analytical approaches close to the social sciences rather than by the traditional methods of historical hermeneutics. Frequently social historians sympathized with the causes as they saw them of the little people, of the underdog, of popular movements, or of the working class. Social history was both demanded and rejected as a vigorous revisionist alternative to the more established ways of historiography, in which the reconstruction of politics and ideas, the history of events and hermeneutic methods traditionally dominated. Americanist Paul E. Johnson recalls the heady early promise of the movement in the late 1960s. The new social history reached UCLA at about that time, and I was trained as a quantitative social science historian. I learned that literary Evidence and the kinds of history that could be written from it were inherently elitist and untrustworthy. Our cousins, the Annalistes, talked of ignoring heroes and events and reconstructing the more constitutive and enduring background of history. Such history could be made only with quantifiable sources. The result would be a history from the bottom up that ultimately engulfed traditional history and, somehow, helped to make a better world. Much of this was acted out with mad scientist bravado. One well-known quantifier said that anyone who did not know statistics at least through multiple regression should not hold a job in a history department. 
My own advisor told us that he wanted history to become a predictive social science. I never went that far. I was drawn to the new social history by its democratic inclusiveness as much as by its system and precision. I wanted to write the history of ordinary people. To historicize them, put them into the social structures and long-term trends that shaped their lives, and at the same time resurrect what they said and did. In the late 1960s, quantitative social history looked like the best way to do that. The Social Science History Association was formed in 1976 to bring together scholars from numerous disciplines interested in social history. It is still active and publishes social science history quarterly. The field is also the specialty of the Journal of Social History, edited since 1967 by Peter Stearns. It covers such topics as gender relations, race in American history, the history of personal relationships, consumerism, sexuality, the social history of politics, crime and punishment, and history of the census. Most of the major historical journals have coverage as well. However, after 1990 social history was increasingly challenged by cultural history, which emphasizes language and the importance of beliefs and assumptions and their causal role in group behavior. Subfields Historical demography The study of the lives of ordinary people was revolutionized in the 1960s by the introduction of sophisticated quantitative and demographic methods, often using individual data from the census and from local registers of births, marriages, deaths and taxes, as well as theoretical models from sociology such as social mobility. HDEMOG is a daily email discussion group that covers the field broadly. Historical demography is the study of population history and demographic processes, usually using census or similar statistical data. It became an important specialty inside social history, with strong connections with the larger field of demography, as in the study of the demographic transition. Topic: Black history. Black history or African American history studies African Americans and Africans in American history. The Association for the Study of African American Life and History was founded by Carter G. Woodson in 1915 and has 2,500 members and publishes the Journal of African American History, formerly the Journal of Negro History. Since 1926 it has sponsored Black History Month every February. Ethnic history Ethnic history is especially important in the U.S. and Canada, where major encyclopedias help define the field. It covers the history of ethnic groups usually not including blacks or Native Americans. Typical approaches include critical ethnic studies, comparative ethnic studies, critical race studies, Asian American, and Latino, a or Chicano, a studies. In recent years Chicano – Chicana studies has become important as the Hispanic population has become the largest minority in the U.S. The Immigration and Ethnic History Society was formed in 1976 and publishes a journal for libraries and its 829 members. The American Conference for Irish Studies, founded in 1960, has 1,700 members and has occasional publications but no journal. The American Italian Historical Association was founded in 1966 and has 400 members. It does not publish a journal. The American Jewish Historical Society is the oldest ethnic society, founded in 1892. It has 3,300 members and publishes American Jewish history. The Polish American Historical Association was founded in 1942, and publishes a newsletter and Polish American Studies, an interdisciplinary, refereed scholarly journal twice each year. H Ethnic is a daily discussion list founded in 1993 with 1400 members, it covers topics of ethnicity and migration globally. <laughs> Labor history Labor history, deals with labor unions and the social history of workers. See for example Labor History of the United States The Study Group on International Labor and Working Class History was established, 1971 and has a membership of 1,000. It publishes International Labor and Working Class History. 
H Labor is a daily email-based discussion group formed in 1993 that reaches over a thousand scholars and advanced students. The Labor and Working Class History Association formed in 1988 and publishes Labor Studies in Working Class History. Kirk 2010 surveys labor historiography in Britain since the formation of the Society for the Study of Labor History in 1960. He reports that labor history has been mostly pragmatic, eclectic and empirical, it has played an important role in historiographical debates, such as those revolving around history from below, institutionalism versus the social history of labor, class, populism, gender, language, postmodernism and the turn to politics. Kirk rejects suggestions that the field is declining, and stresses its innovation, modification and renewal. Kirk also detects a move into conservative insularity and academicism. He recommends a more extensive and critical engagement with the kinds of comparative, transnational and global concerns increasingly popular among labor historians elsewhere, and calls for a revival of public and political interest in the topics. Meanwhile, Navikaz, 2011, examines recent scholarship including the histories of collective action, environment and human ecology, and gender issues, with a focus on work by James Epstein, Malcolm Chase, and Peter Jones. Topic. Women's history Women's history exploded into prominence in the 1970s, and is now well represented in every geographical topic, increasingly it includes gender history. Social history uses the approach of women's history to understand the experiences of ordinary women, as opposed to great women, in the past. Feminist women's historians have critiqued early studies of social history for being too focused on the male experience. Topic. Gender history Gender history focuses on the categories, discourses and experiences of femininity and masculinity as they develop over time. Gender history gained prominence after it was conceptualized in 1986 by Joan W. Scott in her article, Gender, a Useful Category of Historical Analysis. Many social historians use Scott's concept of perceived differences to study how gender relations in the past have unfolded and continue to unfold. In keeping with the cultural turn, many social historians are also gender historians who study how discourses interact with everyday experiences. Topic. History of the family The history of the family emerged as a separate field in the 1970s, with close ties to anthropology and sociology. The trend was especially pronounced in the U.S. and Canada. It emphasizes demographic patterns and public policy, but is quite separate from genealogy, though often drawing on the same primary sources, such as censuses and family records. The influential pioneering study Women, Work, and Family 1978 was done by Louise A. Tilly and Joan W. Scott. It broke new ground with their broad interpretive framework and emphasis on the variable factors shaping women's place in the family and economy in France and England. The study considered the interaction of production, or traditional labor, and reproduction, the work of caring for children and families, in its analysis of women's wage labor and thus helped to bring together labor and family history. Much work has been done on the dichotomy in women's lives between the private sphere and the public. For a recent worldwide overview covering 7,000 years see Maines and Waltner's 2012 book and ebook, The Family, A World History 2012. For comprehensive coverage of the American case, see Marilyn Coleman and Lawrence Ganong, eds. The Social History of the American Family, an Encyclopedia, 4 volume, 2014. The History of Childhood is a Growing Subfield. Topic. History of Education For much of the 20th century, the dominant American historiography, as exemplified by Elwood Patterson Coverley (1868–1941) at Stanford, emphasized the rise of American education as a powerful force for literacy, democracy, and equal opportunity, and a firm basis for higher education and advanced research institutions. It was a story of enlightenment and modernization triumphing over ignorance, cost-cutting, and narrow traditionalism whereby parents tried to block their children's intellectual access to the wider world. Teachers dedicated to the public interest, reformers with a wide vision, and public support from the civic-minded community were the heroes. 
The textbooks help inspire students to become public schools teachers and thereby fulfill their own civic mission. The crisis came in the 1960s, when a new generation of new left scholars and students rejected the traditional celebratory accounts, and identified the educational system as the villain for many of America's weaknesses, failures, and crimes. Michael Katz states they tried to explain the origins of the Vietnam War, the persistence of racism and segregation, the distribution of power among gender and classes, intractable poverty and the decay of cities, and the failure of social institutions and policies designed to deal with mental illness, crime, delinquency, and education. The old guard fought back and bitter historiographical contests, with the younger students and scholars largely promoting the proposition that schools were not the solution to America's ills, they were in part the cause of Americans' problems. The fierce battles of the 1960s died out by the 1990s, but enrollment in education history courses and never recovered. By the 1980s, compromise had been worked out, with all sides focusing on the heavily bureaucratic nature of the American public schooling. In recent years, most histories of education deal with institutions or focus on the ideas histories of major reformers, but a new social history has recently emerged, focused on who were the students in terms of social background and social mobility. In the U.S. attention has often focused on minority and ethnic students. In Britain, Raftery et al. 2007 looks at the historiography on social change and education in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, with particular reference to 19th century schooling. They developed distinctive systems of schooling in the 19th century that reflected not only their relationship to England but also significant contemporaneous economic and social change. This article seeks to create a basis for comparative work by identifying research that has treated this period, offering brief analytical commentaries on some key works, discussing developments in educational historiography, and pointing to lacunae in research. Historians have recently looked at the relationship between schooling and urban growth by studying educational institutions as agents in class formation, relating urban schooling to changes in the shape of cities, linking urbanization with social reform movements, and examining the material conditions affecting child life and the relationship between schools and other agencies that socialize the young. The most economics-minded historians have sought to relate education to changes in the quality of labor, productivity and economic growth, and rates of return on investment in education. A major recent exemplar is Claudia Golden and Lawrence F. Katz, The Race Between Education and Technology 2009, on the Social and Economic History of Twentieth-Century American Schooling. Topic. Urban history The «New Urban History» emerged in the 1950s in Britain and in the 1960s in the U.S. It looked at the «city as process» and, often using quantitative methods, to learn more about the inarticulate masses in the cities, as opposed to the mayors and elites. A major early study was Stefan Thernstrom's Poverty and Progress, Social Mobility in a Nineteenth-Century City 1964, which used census records to study Newburyport, Massachusetts, 1850–1880. A seminal, landmark book, it sparked interest in the 1960s and 1970s in quantitative methods, census sources, bottom-up history, and the measurement of upward social mobility by different ethnic groups. Other exemplars of the new urban history included Kathleen Conzen, Immigrant Milwaukee, 1836–1860 Alan Dolly, Class and Community, The Industrial Revolution in Lynn 1975, 2nd ed. 2000, Michael B. Katz, The People of Hamilton, Canada West 1976, Eric H. Monkinen, The Dangerous Class, Crime and Poverty in Columbus, Ohio 1860–1865 and Michael P. Weber, Social Change in an Industrial Town, Patterns of Progress in Warren, Pennsylvania, From Civil War to World War I 1976. Representative comparative studies include Leonardo Benevolo, The European City 1993, Christopher R. Friedrichs, The Early Modern City, 1450–1750 and James L. McLean, John M. Merriman, and Ugawa Kaoru, eds. Edo and Paris 1994. Edo was the old name for Tokyo, there were no overarching social history theories that emerged developed to explain urban development. Inspiration from urban geography and sociology, as well as a concern with workers as opposed to labor union leaders, families, ethnic groups, racial segregation, and women's roles have proven useful. 
Historians now view the contending groups within the city as agents who shape the direction of urbanization. The subfield has flourished in Australia, where most people live in cities. Topic. Rural history Agricultural history handles the economic and technological dimensions, while rural history handles the social dimension. Burchart 2007 evaluates the state of modern English rural history and identifies an «orthodox» school, focused on the economic history of agriculture. This historiography has made impressive progress in quantifying and explaining the output and productivity achievements of English farming since the agricultural revolution. The celebratory style of the Orthodox school was challenged by a dissident tradition emphasizing the social costs of agricultural progress, notably enclosure, which forced poor tenant farmers off the land. Recently, a new school, associated with the journal Rural History, has broken away from this narrative of agricultural change, elaborating a wider social history. The work of Aylan Hawkins has been pivotal in the recent historiography, in relation to these three traditions. Hawkins, like his precursors, is constrained by an increasingly anachronistic equation of the countryside with agriculture. Geographers and sociologists have developed a concept of a post-productivist. Countryside, dominated by consumption and representation that may have something to offer historians, in conjunction with the well-established historiography of the rural idol. Most rural history has focused on the American South, overwhelmingly rural until the 1950s, but there is a new rural history of the North as well. Instead of becoming agrarian capitalists, farmers held onto pre-industrial capitalist values emphasizing family and community. Rural areas maintained population stability, kinship ties determined rural immigrant settlement and community structures, and the defeminization of farm work encouraged the rural version of the women's sphere. These findings strongly contrast with those in the old frontier history as well as those found in the new urban history. Topic. Religion The historiography of religion focuses mostly on theology and church organization and development. Recently the study of the social history or religious behavior and belief has become important. Topic. Social history in Europe Topic. France Social history has dominated French historiography since the 1920s, thanks to the central role of the Annales School. Its journal Annales focuses attention on the synthesizing of historical patterns identified from social, economic, and cultural history, statistics, medical reports, family studies, and even psychoanalysis. Topic. Germany Social history developed within West German historiography during the 1950s to 60s as the successor to the national history discredited by National Socialism. The German brand of history of society, Gesellschaftsgeschichte, has been known from its beginning in the 1960s for its application of sociological and political modernization theories to German history. Modernization theory was presented by Hans Ulrich Wehler (1931–2014) and his Bielefeld School as the way to transform traditional German history, that is, national political history, centered on a few great men, into an integrated and comparative history of German society encompassing societal structures outside politics. Whaler drew upon the modernization theory of Max Weber, with concepts also from Karl Marx, Otto Hintz, Gustav Schmaler, Werner Sombart, and Thorstein Veblen. In the 1970s and early 1980s, German historians of society, led by Whaler and Jurgen Kaka at the Bielefeld School, gained dominance in Germany by applying both modernization theories and social science methods. From the 1980s, however, they were increasingly criticized by proponents of the cultural turn for not incorporating culture in the history of society, for reducing politics to society, and for reducing individuals to structures. Historians of society inverted the traditional positions they criticized on the model of Marx's inversion of Hegel. As a result, the problems pertaining to the positions criticized were not resolved but only turned on their heads. 
The traditional focus on individuals was inverted into a modern focus on structures, the traditional focus on culture was inverted into a modern focus on structures, and traditional emphatic understanding was inverted into modern causal explanation. Hungary Before World War II, political history was in decline and an effort was made to introduce social history in the style of the French Annales school. After the war only Marxist interpretations were allowed. With the end of communism in Hungary in 1989. Marxist historiography collapsed and social history came into its own, especially the study of the demographic patterns of the early modern period. Research priorities have shifted toward urban history and the conditions of everyday life. Topic. Soviet Union When communism ended in 1991, large parts of the Soviet archives were opened. The historian's data base leapt from a limited range of sources to a vast array of records created by modern bureaucracies. Social history flourished. The old Marxist historiography collapsed overnight. Topic. Canada Social history had a «golden age» in Canada in the 1970s, and continues to flourish among scholars. Its strengths include demography, women, labour, and urban studies. Topic. Political history While the study of elites and political institutions has produced a vast body of scholarship, the impact after 1960 of social historians has shifted emphasis onto the politics of ordinary people, especially voters and collective movements. Political historians responded with the new political history, which has shifted attention to political cultures. Some scholars have recently applied a cultural approach to political history. Some political historians complain that social historians are likely to put too much stress on the dimensions of class, gender and race, reflecting a leftist political agenda that assumes outsiders in politics are more interesting than the actual decision makers. Social history, with its leftist political origins, initially sought to link state power to everyday experience in the 1960s. Yet by the 1970s, social historians increasingly excluded analyses of state power from its focus. Social historians have recently engaged with political history through studies of the relationships between state formation, power and everyday life with the theoretical tools of cultural hegemony and governmentality. See also List of history journals Analysis School History of Sociology Living History and Open Air Museums Topic. Practitioners Salo Baron (1895–1989), Jewish history. Mark Bloch (1886–1944), Medieval Analysis School. Asa Briggs, Baron Briggs, British. Martin Broschet (1926–1989), Germany. Merle Curdy (1897–1997), American. Natalie Zeman Davis, B. 1928, France. Herbert Gutman, 1928 to 1985, American Black and Labor History. Eugene D. Genovese, 1930 to 2012, American Slavery. S. D. Goitin, 1900 to 1985, Medieval Jewish History in Fustat and Environs. Oscar Hanlon, 1915 to 2011, American Ethnic. Emmanuel Leroy Ledurie, B. 1929, leader of Analysis School, France. Ram Sharma, 1919 to 2011, India. Stefan Thernstrom, B. 1934, ethnic American, social mobility. Charles Tilley, 1929 to 2008, European theory. Louise A. Tilley, B. 1930, Europe, women and family. Eric Hobbs Baum, 1917 to 2012, Labor History, Social Movements and Resistances. E. P. Thompson, 1924 to 1993, British Labor. Hans Ulrich Weiler, 1931 to 2014, 19th Century Germany, Bielefeld School. Topic: Bibliography. 
Addis, Michael. Social History and the Revolution in African and Asian Historiography. Journal of Social History 19, 1985, 335-378. Anderson, Michael. Approaches to the History of the Western Family 1500-1914-1995-104 pp excerpt and text search Cabrera, Miguel A. Post-Social History, An Introduction, 2004, 163 pp. Caton, Mary Cupic, Elliot J. Gorn, and Peter W. Williams, eds. Encyclopedia of American Social History 3 volume 1993 2653 pp, long articles pages by leading scholars, CVI, Part 2, Methods and Contexts, pp 235-434 Cross, Michael S. Social History. Canadian Encyclopedia 2008 online Cross, Michael S. and Keeley, Gregory S., eds. Readings in Canadian Social History 5 Vol. 1984. 243 pp. Duald, Jonathan. Lost Worlds, The Emergence of French Social History, 1815-1970, 2006, 241 pp. Ely, Jeff. A Crooked Line, From Cultural History to the History of Society, 2005, 301 pp. Fairburn, Miles. Social History, Problems, Strategies and Methods, 1999. 325 pp. Fass, Paula, ed. Encyclopedia of Children and Childhood, in History and Society, 3 vols. 2003. Fletcher, Roger. Recent Developments in West German Historiography, The Bielefeld School and Its Critics. German Studies Review 1984 7, 451-480. ISSN 0149-7952 Full Text, in JSTOR. Hervin, Tamara K. The History of the Family and the Complexity of Social Change. American Historical Review, February 1991, Vol. 96 Issue 1, pp 95-124 in JSTOR. Henretta, James. Social History as Lived and Written. American Historical Review 84, 1979, 1293 in JSTOR. Canner, Barbara. Women in English Social History, 1800 1914, A Guide to Research, 2 Vol. 1988 1990. 871 pp. Lloyd, Christopher. Explanation in Social History, 1986. 375 pp. Lorenz, Chris. Won't you tell me, where have all the good times gone? On the advantages and disadvantages of modernization theory for history. Rethinking History 2006 10 2, 171 200. ISSN 1364 2529 Full Text, EBSCO. Mintz, Stephen. Huck's Raft, A History of American Childhood 2006, excerpt and text search Mintz, Stephen and Susan Kellogg. Domestic Revolutions, A Social History of American Family Life 1989, excerpt and text search Mosley, Stephen. Common Ground, Integrating Social and Environmental History. Journal of Social History, Vol. 39 No. 3, Spring 2006, pp. 915-933, Relations with Environmental History, in Project Muse Muehlbauer, Matthew S., and David J. Ulbrich, eds. The Routledge History of Global War and Society 2018-1 Palmer, Brian D., and Todd McCallum. Working Class History. Canadian Encyclopedia 2008. Pomerantz, Kenneth. Social History and World History, From Daily Life to Patterns of Change. Journal of World History 2007 18 69-98. ISSN 1045-6007 Full Text, in History Cooperative and Project Muse Stearns, Peter N. Social History Today and Tomorrow. Journal of Social History 10, 1976, 129-155. Stearns, Peter N. Social History Present and Future. Journal of Social History. Volume, 37. 
Issue, 1, 2003, pp 9+, plus, online edition Stearns, Peter, ed. Encyclopedia of Social History 1994-856 pp. Stearns, Peter, ed. Encyclopedia of European Social History from 1350 to 2000 5 volume 2000, 209 essays by leading scholars in 3000 pp. Sutherland, Neil. Childhood, History of. Canadian Encyclopedia 2008. Hobbesbaum, Eric. The Age of Revolution, Europe 1789-1848. Skokpol, Theta, and Daniel Cairo, eds. Vision and Method in Historical Sociology 1984. Thompson, E. P. The Essential E. P. Thompson, 2001. 512 pp. Highly influential British historian of the working class. Thompson, F. M. L., ed. The Cambridge Social History of Britain, 1750-1950, Volume 1, Regions and Communities, Volume 2, People and Their Environment, Volume 3, Social Agencies and Institutions, 1990. 492 pp. Tilly, Charles. The Old New Social History and the New Old Social History. Review 7 3, Winter 1984-363-406 Online. Tilly, Charles. Big Structures, Large Processes, Huge Comparisons 1984. Timmons, Jeffrey. The Future of Learning and Teaching in Social History, The Research Approach and Employability. Journal of Social History 2006 39 829-842. ISSN 0022-4529 Full Text, History Cooperative and Project Muse Wilson, Adrian, ed. Rethinking Social History, English Society, 1570-1920 and its Interpretation, 1993, 342 pp. Zunz, Olivier, ed. Reliving the Past, The Worlds of Social History, 1985, online edition. Topic. Primary sources Binder, Frederick M. and David M. Reimers, eds. The Way We Lived, Essays and Documents in American Social History, 2000. 313 pp. Topic. Notes Topic. External links International Institute of Social History American Social History Project Social History Society UK AMSAB Institute of Social History Belgium Victorian Era Social History Society for the Social History of Medicine History Online International Association of Labor History Institutions American Social History Online 19th and 20th Digital Resources StoryCorps, National Social History Project Records Ordinary People Telling Their Stories, Video by Democracy Now.